fully enclosed canopy over the driving compartment has already used the new aerodynamics to set the track record at over 268 miles an hour during qualifying. At the flash of the green light, Garlis immediately moved out to a big lead as Miller got close to the guardrail. Garlis, with a great elapsed time, still far short of the coveted 270 mile an hour mark. 544. Okay. Everything feel good on the car down the racetrack? Yeah, just a backfire. It's dropped a valve, I guess, in the lights or something. Okay, so Don Garlitz has some work to do before round number two. Garlitz and his crew chief, Herb Parks, head back to the pit area to prepare the Swamp Rat for the second round. Another dramatic story developed in the first round. Three-time world champion Shirley Muldowney qualified number 11 and had to race the former National Football League star quarterback, Dan Pastorini. Now a full-time professional drag racer, Pastorini stunned the field by qualifying third. Shirley returned to racing just a month and a half ago at the Winter Nationals, where she lost in a first-round confrontation with Don Garland. Today, she faced the newest driver in the top fuel ranks, Dan Pastorini. It was a great start. Anybody's race until the finish line, where the upset of the day occurred as Pastorini just squeaked by Shirley to advance to the second round. Always the gentleman, Pastorini was quick to compliment the lady. I love you. God bless you. Good race. You it okay? Was a good race. Good race. I was late. They're gonna chew me out. You're a hell of a lady. Thank you. You want some help out? Yeah. Come on. The 1986 NHRA Gator Nationals is being brought to you by Motorcraft. Quality parts for all makes of cars and trucks. Motorcraft from Ford exceeds the need. And by Goodyear, makers of the Eagle, the high-performance radio engineered for cars with proper qualifications. And by Suzuki, makers of the 1986 Quad Runners, foremost in four-wheeling. Suzuki works like a single moving part. In the Don Garlitz pit area, work progressing on the controversial nose piece, which suffered considerable damage when the Kevlar belts were thrown off the wheels in that first round race. We'll be right back to Gainesville, Florida, and round two of the top fuel competition at the Gator Nationals. Back at the Gator Nationals at Gainesville Raceway, located near Gainesville, Florida, a bright, sunshiny afternoon as Dan Pastorini has gotten the break of a lifetime. On the racetrack at the moment, the former NFL quarterback is unopposed. His competition was to have been Chris Caramassini's. In winning his first round race over Bill Mullins, Caramassini's car suffered severe engine damage. A blackened crankshaft has put him out of competition for the rest of the day thus giving the bye run to Dan Pastorini. Earlier, Steve asked Pastorini to compare professional drag racing to pro football. Well, I think it's just, you know, the willingness to work. Uh, you have to work in football just like you have to do in this business, and right now it's just Donnie and myself, and uh, we work very well together. It's, I'm fortunate that I've got good people working with me and, and helping me out. This industry is, uh, is a tremendous industry. The NHRA has helped us a bunch. Uh, all of our sponsors that are on the car have helped us trem tremendously, and, and I'm very appreciative of that fact. Which is harder work, football or drag racing? Drag racing. Which is more fun? Drag racing. <laughs> two for two. That's right. Dan Bastarini, the former NFL quarterback, and he is just making a checkout run. He shuts it off early, the car coasting through the quarter mile. Dan was referring to his crew chief, Donnie Couch, who does such a capable job of preparing this number three qualifier. Our next race, the engines lit on the starting line. The former national champion, the former world champion, Jerry Beck. Driving for car owner Larry Miner, Beck is opposed by Connie Coletta. This is a rematch of the final round of Top Fuel Eliminator in 1983. Gary Beck won that matchup. Earlier today, Connie Coletta in round number one defeated Gary Ormsby, while Gary Beck defeated Hank Edris. Beck's most recent national event victory came at the close of last season at the World Finals. Beck is in the far lane, number two in the world last season. Connie Coletta in the lane nearest our cameras. They're off the starting line together, and it appears Coletta has the lead. A close race at the finish, and Beck wins it by half a car length. Gary Beck with a 5.6 second 
three second elapsed time at 257 miles an hour used a starting line advantage as we watch again in slow motion the whole shot or the advantage off the starting line goes to the car in the far lane that's gary beck coletta has some power though he pulls right up alongside but at the finish line it's gary beck just nosing out coletta 5.63 the elapsed time for beck for coletta 5.60 Zero. The whole shot pays. Gary Beck, nice driving. Uh, you beat Connie Collette with a whole shot. Oh, Trevor, we needed it. I know he was, he's been running real good, and our car's a little inconsistent, so we have to go for it. <laughs> you ran very well in the left lane, which some said was maybe subpar. Well, yes and no, but it's, you know, it was all right. I didn't hear the ET yet, but it's, it's uh, you know, we're, it held on good. 563. Well, it's a little slower than last time, but it was all right. Gary Beck goes into the semis. Beck and his crew head back to the pit area to get their car prepared for the next round of racing. On the starting line, it is a race between the two fastest cars in the world. Here is Don Garland. He has established a track record at over 268 miles an hour with the newest streamlined version of the Swamp Rat. In the far lane is Joe Amato. He established the official NHRA national record at over 269 miles an hour at the recently completed Winter Nationals. Thus, pairing together the two fastest cars in the world. Garlitz is concerned about the front wheel and tire combination. Not really a tire, it is a Kevlar belt that is wrapped around those 13-inch wheels. Those belts have come off the wheels on every run thus far at the Gator Nationals. Joe Amato, running a traditional top fuel dragster, defeated Gene Snow in the first round of competition. It was one year ago at this event that Joe Amato debuted the tall wing and thus became the first man ever over 260 miles an hour. He did it on this racetrack. Now the question is, can either driver run 270? A brilliant start for Don Garland. Easily outdistancing Joe Amato. Garland with a great elapsed time, 5.46 seconds. His speed, though, only 246 miles an hour. The concern for those front wheels beginning to show. Here's Daryl Gwynn. He won the Winter National. He's 24 years old and one of the rising stars of top fuel racing. Against him will be the man that won the Gator Nationals one year ago, Dick LaHaye. His crew chief is his daughter, Kim LaHaye, running out in front of the car to direct traffic for her dad. The burnouts used by all cars in competition designed to heat up those monster slicks to provide the best traction possible for some 2,500 horsepower to get a hold of the pavement. LaHaye against Gwynn in round number two. Meantime, down on the return road, Don Garlitz removing parts off of that damaged front nose piece. The Kevlar belt spinning off of the wheels once again. It may be that Garlitz has made the decision not to shoot for that 270 mile an hour mark because of the problems with the front wheels. Kim LaHaye pointing the direction that she wants her dad to back that dragster up into his own track, trying to get the rubber to rubber contact that is so important to let these cars launch off the starting line. In the first round of racing, Dick LaHaye, also driving a brand new car, defeated Earl Whiting, while Daryl Gwynn beat Jimmy King. Gwynn has had his share of problems this weekend, most of them coming during qualifying. Daryl Gwynn exploded one motor. He and his father, crew chief, replaced that one with the second motor. It also exploded into flames, thus causing them to put the third engine of the weekend between the frame rails of the dragster to make the final elimination. With each of these racing engines valued at some $25,000, you can see this has been a very expensive weekend for the Gwynn family. Dick LaHaye, on the other hand, even with a brand new car, has a relatively trouble-free record this weekend. In the first round, he ran 5.54 seconds at 254 miles an hour. Very competitive and certainly within striking distance of the leaders. Quinn in the far lane. Dick LaHaye, the defending champion, in the near lane. Staging very carefully into those light beams that stretch across the starting line. The front wheels will roll into those light beams, lighting and activating a bulb on the top of the Christmas tree, telling the starter it's time to throw the switch. And at the flash of green, it is Dick LaHaye away. And LaHaye easily wins the race. 5.54 seconds. Uh, 
duplicate of his first round time at 257 miles an hour. So that sets up our pairings in the semifinal. Dick LaHaye with a quicker elapsed time in round two has the lane choice over Gary Beck, while Don Garlitz has the lane choice over Dan Pastorini. Talk about Super Bowl competition. First, Pastorini has to race the three-time world champion, Shirley Muldowney. He wins that race. Now, in the semifinals, it is Pastorini against the reigning world champion and the winning a top fuel racer of all time, Don Garland. Dan's crew chief, Donny Couch, must think his driver is facing the defensive line of the Chicago Bears. Daddy Don Garland's pit area. There's repair work going on to fix the damage to that fiberglass nose piece that was caused when the Kevlar belts spun off those 13 inch wheels in round number two. The huge overflow crowd that's jammed into Gainesville Raceway is ready for more excitement. And on the starting line, it is the defending champion in funny cars, Kenny Bernstein. His opponent in this second round race is John Force. Force was runner-up at the recently completed NHRA Winter Nationals, and he also is debuting a brand new car. In round number one, John Force defeated Tim Gross, while the reigning world champion, Kenny Bernstein, beat Tom Hoover. And if Don Garlitz can be considered to be the innovative leader in top fuel racing, then Kenny Bernstein, along with his crew chief, Dale Armstrong, are at the top of the field in funny car racing. Aerodynamically slick, the Ford Tempo body in the near lane is racing the brand new Chevy Cavalier bodied car of John Force. Moving from a Corvette body to a Cavalier, trying to pick up that aerodynamic advantage. Both drivers now ready. It's a green light start, and Bernstein is ahead of Force in the middle of the track and pulls ahead to a several car length victory. Bernstein at 5.66 seconds elapsed time, 256 miles an hour, consistently the quickest funny car in the field. Our next race, getting ready to go. Billy Meyer from Waco, Texas. His competition, the Corvette-bodied entry of Tom McEwen. The funny cars use a drivetrain that is very similar to that in a top fuel dragster. The engines are practically identical. They run on nitromethane fuel. They consume anywhere from 9 to 11 gallons of fuel per quarter mile run, and they make over 2,500 horsepower. The cars themselves are wrapped in a fiberglass body that is a replica of a modern car. This is Billy Meyer's Mustang. Meyer, in round number one of racing at the Gator Nationals, defeated Jim Head, while Tom McEwen, the longtime veteran, beat Ray Higley. McEwen comes into this Gator Nationals competition with a brand new crew chief, highly regarded by his fellow competitors. That's Bill Schultz. Let's go down now to Steve Evans with Kenny Bernstein. Well, Kenny Bernstein continues to saw his way through this field. John Forrest, his latest victim at a 566, Kenny. Well, it, uh, it was smooth that time, Steve. Of course, we took a little out of it to get down the racetrack and not shake so hard as the first time. And, and it worked. It just slowed down a little bit. Of course, it's always a tough customer. He'd give you a heck of a fight halfway down. Oh, yeah. He was out on me a little bit, and he always does. He's been beating the points pretty good at the start of this season. So uh, it was nice to get by that one. Besides, he's a little ahead of us in the points, and maybe we can come around him this time. Kenny obviously referring to the points in the world championship race. Tom McEwen in the near lane. Billy Meyer in the far lane. Meyer inching forward into the staging beam. A great start for Meyer. at 249 miles an hour. Let's go back and in slow motion see just what happened. It was a brilliant start for Billy Meyer. By some four hundredths of a second, he had the advantage over Don McEwen off the starting line. Then the car losing traction. Meyer has to fight for control. It crosses the center line, and that disqualifies Billy Meyer. And Don McEwen goes on to win. Well, I don't think I'll have to tell Tom McEwen that Billy Meyer crossed the center line. Good thing I was in front of him. Could you see him? Out my mirror. <laughs> no, I, yeah, he was coming right in my door, so I, yeah. Clean and dry, another good elapsed time. Very steady performance. Yeah, I think Schultz is uh, trying to uh, get a combination down a little different than he had with Poldy's car, where it would run low ET, one round of smoke to tires the next, you know? And I think he's trying to get a consistent situation to get used to me being kind of an old guy. <laughs> trying to make up for that, you know? 
Well, speaking of Bill Schultz, one of the highest paid mechanics in this business, he doesn't even bother coming down in the car to pick you up. He's in the limousine down there with just the window cracked open with a drink in his hand, and if we run good, he comes back to the trailer. I'll tell him you said that. Okay, thank you. Don McEwen enjoying the sense of humor that's become his trademark and talking about his new crew chief, Bill Schultz, who previously had been the crew chief for Dale Paldy. On the starting line, Ed McCulloch at the wheel of the Oldsmobile. This is one of the Larry Minor team cars. McCulloch with a long, smoky burnout will be racing against the team of Candies and Hughes, their driver, Mark Oswald. Oswald at the wheel of the Pontiac Trans Am bodied car. Both of these vehicles, very aerodynamic design to slice through the air and reach speeds of well over 260 miles an hour. Oswald, in round number one, defeated John Lombardo at the wheel of the Blue Max, while Ed McCulloch raced and beat Brad Tuttle. McCulloch has won this race before, but it was way back in 1972. And you can be sure that Ed McCulloch would like to move through the funny car field as his teammate Gary Beck is through top fuel. A great start for McCulloch. Instant tire smoke for Mark Oswald. But McCulloch's car has gone sour. Listening to the engine, it sounds like it's only running on about six cylinders. But McCulloch walks to a win of a 6.67 as Mark Oswald going up in tire smoke off the starting line lets Ed McCulloch take an easy win and advance into the semifinals. One of the next pair, John Martin, is a racer that has been predominantly competing on the West Coast. This is his first full season on the National Event Tour. He is racing a second-generation competitor, Scott Coletta, the son of top fuel racer Connie Coletta, at the wheel now of the Ford Mustang Funny Car. For John Martin, he defeated Doc Holliday in round number one. Martin has just started to become a force to be reckoned with in funny car racing. He qualified at the recent Winter Nationals, now qualified into this very top field at the Gator Nationals. Scott Coletta, one of the youngest racers in funny car competition, defeated Johnny West at the wheel of the famed Hawaiian in round number one. Martin in the near lane, Coletta in the far lane. A trouble start for both drivers. Coletta up in smoke, then the supercharger explodes on John Martin's car. Coletta stands on the throttle and goes through the lights at 202 miles an hour. His elapsed time only 7.35, but it really doesn't matter. He got there first, he got the win, and John Martin with engine damage as the supercharger backfiring, putting him out of competition. Let's take a look at it once again. Coletta's in the far lane, Martin in the near lane. They leave the starting line side by side. Then troubles begin. For Coletta, he loses traction. Then Martin loses traction. Coletta backs out of it. And then the supercharger explodes in Martin's car. Coletta reacting to that, stands on the throttle and wins the race. You can be sure it's a disappointed John Martin as mechanical problems put him out of competition, giving the race to Scott Coletta. A tenacious victory, young man. It just never hurts to get back on the throttle, does it? That's it. You know, we ain't got it straightened around yet, but they say luck is 90% of it, and so far I've had it. <laughs> you probably heard John Martin kaboom that yeah. one. Yeah, and it was shaking the tires, and I almost crossed the center line. That's why I lifted, and then I saw him bang, and I said, take it. Will your dad get involved now that he's out? Yeah, he's, he never wasn't involved. <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> Scott Coletta paying tribute to his dad. Connie Coletta out of competition now in top fuel leaving. Our pairing for the semifinals, Scott Coletta against Ed McCulloch. McCulloch with lane choice. The other pair finds two longtime veterans, Tom McEwen against the defending champion Kenny Bernstein, with Bernstein having lane choice. Back in the mid area at Kenny Bernstein's slot, it is quiet, it is very confident as they prepare for the semifinals at the Gator Nationals. Back at Gainesville, Florida, and the Gator Nationals, I'm Dave McClelland, along with Steve Evans, and we're in Tom McEwen's pit area. Crew Chief Bill Schultz has ordered the installation of a new engine. There was nothing wrong with the old one, but Schultz wanted to change combinations. He wanted to try something different for the semifinal race against Kenny Bernstein. On the starting line, the Pro Stock semifinals, the factory hot rods of NHRA championship drag racing. 
California. He was known as the California Flash, but has since been transplanted to Ohio. Leo, in the previous round, defeated Dempsey Hardy. Racing against him will be Bruce Allen. Out of Arlington, Texas, in the Rare and Morrison shop, Allen defeated the world champion Paul Glidden in round number two. Bruce Allen, in his first full season of competition in NHRA drag racing last year, finished number three in the world, while Butch Leal was number four. Rules restrictions limit these cars to 500 cubic inches maximum, two four-barrel carburetors, racing gasoline only, and they must originate from a factory-built car. But bear in mind, these are pure race cars designed for one thing, to cover a standing start quarter mile as quickly as possible. Bruce Allen near lane, Butch Leal in the far lane, Pontiac versus Chevrolet, and it is Butch Leal off the starting line first, it's a close race in the middle of the course, Bruce Allen trying to smack, but it's Butch Leal by a fender length at the finish line, winning the race, 7.54 seconds, his speed 183 miles an hour, and Leal with the Pontiac Firebird moves into the finals. As we look at the start again, Butch Leal had the advantage by two hundredths of a second. And it's a good thing for Leal because Bruce Allen's car actually ran the quarter mile quicker. Both lanes on the racetrack are timed separately, and in this case, it's a good thing because you can see the difference between the two cars. That two hundredths of a second advantage off the starting line was actually just a couple of feet at the finish line for Butch Leal. Well, for years, we've been saying how quick Butch Leal is off the starting line. It paid off again. You had two hundredths in the bank, and you needed it. He ran two hundredths quicker. Oh, that was the greatest race. Uh, Bruce is always there every time, and I told him last year, I said, you beat me every time I raced you, my year this year, and uh, he's just such a nice guy and a great driver, as you know, and uh, I knew they'd be ready at this time. They've been having trouble, and uh, they got it fixed, and uh, he was right beside me. Matter of fact, I didn't know who won. The remaining race in the semifinal round of Pro Stock matches Don Campanello against Gordy Rivera. Rivera in a Chevrolet Camaro is beginning to make his mark in the Pro Stock Wars. He qualified well at this race. He has qualified at most of the NHRA national events over the past season. In the previous round, Rivera defeated Gene Fashing. The big story in this race is Don Campanello, who defeated Jerry Ekman in the previous round. Campanello, after his first qualifying attempt on Saturday, was ready to go home. His crew talked him into staying and trying one more time. He did. It netted him a 7.50 second qualifying time, which put him number two in the 16-car field. Rivera in the far lane. Wayne, New Jersey's Don Campanello in the near lane. start by Don Campanello. Campanello with a half a second advantage on the starting line, parlays it into a one-car length victory over Gordon Rivera. So Don Campanello, for the first time in his career, goes into the finals of an NHRA national event. Let's go back to the starting line and watch once again. You see the advantage by Don Campanello at the start, but lots of horsepower out of Gordon Rivera's car. They're almost even at this point, but Campanello pulls ahead in the middle of the course, carries it through to the finish line, and it's a one-car link victory for Don Campanello. Don Campanello, is this just about your greatest day at the drag strip? Yeah, I have to say that. Yeah, I'd have to say that. I know you changed... my way. You changed engines, and so did Gordy Rivera we hear in the background. It paid off for one of you anyway. Yeah, I hurt my good engine, and I put in last year's engine. Worked out right. Now you got a tough customer in Butch Leal. Well, we'll see what we can do. One at a time. <laughs> Don Campanella, the second qualifier, goes into the finals. Great day. Amazingly calm and collected for his biggest day ever at a drag strip, Don Campanello gets set for his final round race against Butch Leal. Leal, by virtue of his lower elapsed time in the semifinals, will have lane choice. There's a lot more to any of these NHRA national events than just the pro categories. The pit area is literally jammed with some of the most exotic cars seen anywhere in the world. This is truly one of the world's largest car shows, with over 600 entries and an estimated value of over $20 million in race cars. In addition to the pros we are watching, finals have been held in seven other categories, and here are the winners and runners-up. Each category represents different types of cars, from pure race cars like the Dragsters to cars very similar to those driven on the streets of America every day. 
And yes, in addition to the four-wheelers, we also have seen some two-wheel action on the racetrack. The finals in Pro Stock Eliminator match the Suzuki's of John Mafaro against Rick Stetson. And Stetson built up a quick lead off the starting line. Mafaro with mechanical problems. And Rick Stetson won the Pro Stock Motorcycle title at the Gator Nationals. Our congratulations to Stetson on his first ever national event victory. Back in the pit area, the big news is Don Garland. He has decided not to try for that 270 mile an hour mark and concentrate on winning this race, the 17th annual NHRA Motorcraft Gator National. Internationals, this huge crowd is waiting for one thing, and that is their favorite, Big Daddy Don Garland. Gainesville Raceway is located just a few miles from Garland's home in Ocala, Florida, where he operates Don Garland's Museum of Drag Racing. This is his latest creation, number 30 in the long series of dragsters that have borne the name Swamp Rat. Garland has already run over 268 miles an hour this weekend, but he has not been without his problems, which center around those new small front wheels and the Kevlar belt he uses as a tire. He is racing against Dan Pastorini, who is enjoying the most successful weekend of his short racing career. Earlier, Steve Evans talked to the former quarterback. To be Shirley Muldowney and Don Garlitz in one afternoon, I don't know of a top fuel driver who hasn't had that dream. You've got a shot at making it reality here. It is a dream come true, really, Steve. I'm, I'm really excited about it. We've, uh, we've been working real hard for the last year. I gotta give credit where credit's due. This car wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for Donnie Couch. He's done a tremendous job getting the car ready. And as you know, we're not a high dollar operation, but you know, we get the thing, we get the job done sometimes. Defeating Shirley Muldowney was an accomplishment in itself. Now he is racing against the crowd favorite as Herb Parks makes sure that Canopy is closed tightly over Big Daddy Don Garland. He approaches the starting line. again. Garland is in the near lane. This streamlined device accelerates down the quarter mile and easily outdistancing Dan Pastorini, who ran 5.49 seconds, losing to Garland, who became the first driver ever over 270 miles an hour. As the fans say, Big Daddy rules. But he's still got problems with those front wheels. The Kevlar belt spun off once again. You can hear him in the background. The crew says it. You punched a hole in the air. You drive right through it. 272. Oh, my God. Too fast for the record. <laughs> Too fast for those bands on those rear wheels. Yeah, we got to have some real tires up on the front of this thing. You know, I heard you say to your crew, I'm not going to try the 270. That's over with for this race. There it was. Well, it's just, it's just running good. You know, we, you know, you can't hardly help yourself. You basically tune... And I didn't really, we did, we were taking nitro out of it. It's just that it's so slick. The concept obviously works. Yes, it's, it's the design of the future. There's no question about it. And we'll have the tire thing fixed. We've already got tires. We've got some little airplane tires. That's going to do the job just nice. Oh, by the way, you went ran low ET as well, a quicker 540. Great, great. Okay. Big Daddy, the fastest man in the world of drag racing. At the age of 54, Don Garlett, still the innovator, still the pace setter. The defending champion at the Gator Nationals, Dick LaHaye, racing the semi-final match against Gary Beck. Finishing number seven in the world last season, Beck is in the far lane. In the near lane, number nine in the world championship chase last year, Dick LaHaye brought his brand new car to the Gator Nationals. to race this man, Don Garland, in the finals for the Gator Nationals Top Fuel title. Going into that final round race, Don Garland will have lane choice. 
the semifinals of Funny Car Eliminator. Kenny Bernstein, the reigning world champion and defending Gators champion, is in the near lane. In the far lane is Tom McEwen with that brand new engine ordered into the car by crew chief Bill Schultz. Let's go to Steve with Dick LaHaye. You were strapped in the car. You could see the scoreboard. Garlitz won 272. Yeah, I know. I mean, he's got it zipping down there in the lights, don't he? And it just, it's unreal. I don't know how fast this thing will run because I haven't run it through the lights yet, but we're going to try. We're about to find out, huh? That's it. <laughs> Dick LaHaye in his brand new car. He and his daughter Kim will be back in the pits getting it ready for the finals against Don Garlitz. On the starting line, this may appear as a mismatch. Kenny Bernstein, the reigning world champion, the defending Gator Nationals champion, is at the top of his career. Tom McEwen has won only two national events in his long career. And Frank Hawley, the former two-time world champion, has said that maybe McEwen's just getting a little bit too old for all of this. McEwen put the whole shot on Bernstein, and he used it to win the race at the finish line. As we compare the elapsed times, McEwen at 5.67 seconds, Bernstein at 5.65, McEwen wins. Yeah, the 300 whole shot, and it's a good thing. He ran 200 quicker. You ran 5.67 and beat him. No time for jokes, Evans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you the God's truth. Thank you very much. We're, we're, we're due, I think. And it was Schultz's decision to change the engines, and it paid off. The whole thing is this a decision, everything. All I try to do is leave somewhere in the majority of a minute on the light down there, no matter what Frank Hawley may say. Uh, we beat Frank, you know, we run him out of drag racing, you know. He gets it up there, that's all he wants, but, you know, he wasn't the flash, you know. <laughs> but anyway, we're happy to be here, and I'm happy with the whole crew and the whole everything, and let's just hope our luck hangs on. Steve, as I've told you many times, age has nothing to do with being fast. And here's one of the younger stars of the sport. This is Scott Coletta, the son of top fuel racer Connie Coletta, in the semifinals against Ed McCulloch, one of the established stars of funny car racing. Coletta in the far lane. McCulloch driving for Larry Miner is in the near lane. Here's another case of the wide disparity of ages. Scott Coletta is in his early 20s, while McCulloch, at the age of 41, is still very much a force to be Brilliant 567 in the semifinals. McEwen has lane choice. Back in the Dick LaHaye pit area. His crew chief and daughter, Kim LaHaye, preparing that race heavy engine for the final round match against the first man ever. Over 270 miles an hour, Don Garland. The pressure's on Dick LaHaye. We'll be right back with the finals of the NHRA Motorcraft Gator National. The center of attention at the Gator Nationals is the pit area of Don Garland. Behind that throng of people, there is a lot of work going on. But a sense of humor still prevails. There's now a speed limit sign, 270 miles an hour, strictly enforced. But the damage is there. The damage done when those Kevlar belts spun off those front wheels at over 270 miles an hour. Garland has more work than you might think to get ready for the final again. The 500 cubic inch gasoline burning engines residing under the fiberglass hoods of today's modern hot rods. Don Campanello, remember he's the one that wanted to go home yesterday before qualifying was completed. His crew talked him into staying. Now he's in the finals against this man, Butch Leal, finishing number four in the world last year. On the basis of elapsed times recorded today, Leal has got to be considered the favorite in this final. Campanello, the New Jersey-based Pontiac Fire 
Thunderbird in the far lane. In the near lane, out of Blacklick, Ohio, is Butch Leal. Leal is a member of that multi-car team owned by Gil Kirk out of Columbus. He has been to the finals of Pro Stock Eliminator many times, but his competitor, Don Campanello, has only been there once when he finished as a runner-up at the 1984 NHRA Southern Nationals. A pair of Pontiacs in the finals of Pro Stock Eliminator. A little staging psychology being used. Leal stages first. But Don Campanello will take the win any way he can get it. Let's look. You see in the near lane, Butch Leal leaving just too quick. And there in the Christmas tree, dead center of the screen, is the big red light indicating Don Campanello wins. Well, I don't think Don Campanello had the foggiest idea that Butch Leal had red lighted when he rolled up here, Don. No, he's a pretty good driver. Congratulations. For a guy who was going to go home yesterday, are you glad you stayed? <laughs> Got me on the spot now. <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot of motor trouble, but you came through. I uh, changed three engines. I had a lot of problems all through the week. You know, we only made one qualifying run. But uh, when luck is with you, it's just, just there. Well, congratulations. Thanks. The biggest day in your drag racing career. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. And I'm Campanella, the upset winner of Pro Stock. Very relaxed in his victory, shaking hands with his competitor, Butch Leal, Don Campanello, his first ever NHRA national event win. Back at the starting line, the luck continues for Ed McCulloch. There is problems with Tom McEwen's car. He is out of competition as they attempted to start the engine. Something went wrong. Taking off his fireproof gloves, Tom McEwen is out of the race. Ed McCulloch will be the winner of Funny Car Eliminator. A single buy run for McCulloch. We have seen earlier he has not had a good performance level. McEwen not at all happy with what he's seeing. It is Ed McCulloch shutting it off and just coasting through to take his second ever Gator Nationals title. He won this race way back in 1972. As McEwen heads back to the pit area, it'll be to the victory lane for Ed McCulloch. That elapsed time of 11.25 seconds, the slowest ever to win a funny car title. Back at the starting line, Don Garlitz is getting set to try for his 30th national event win. Here at the motor, Kim LaHaye brings the 2,500 horsepower engine to life for her dad and defending champion Dick LaHaye. Let's go down to Steve Evans with Ed McCullough. Well, ladies, congratulations on winning the Gator Nationals. We could still make a flight to Vegas. You want to do that tonight? You're hot. I tell you, Steve, as long as I've been without any luck at all, I think I got all two years of it right here today. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, I don't know what was wrong with the Jim's car. It kind of popped, and that was that. The guy said it sounded like possibly a hydraulic did up there at the starting line, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I was glad to see McEwen go, you know, get this far. He ran real good. He welded Bernstein, you know, and, uh, you know, that was a big plus for him. Uh, we, we joked about it a little bit. Who's the luckiest today? Well, I'm the luckiest today. There's no doubt about that, Steve. Ed McCulloch, a very lucky man. Don Garlitz in the lane nearest the camera with those very small wheels and Kevlar belts that have caused him so many headaches throughout this entire event. He has thrown the belts off on every run he has gone down the racetrack. And now he is in the final. He's already established the speed at over 272 miles an hour, but he's racing the defending champion. Debuting his brand new car at this event is Dick LaHaye. And as we heard him tell Steve earlier, he has not run that car as hard as he can through the entire quarter mile. What a matchup. The defending champion, Dick LaHaye, against the all-time winner in top fuel racing, Don Garlitz. And it's been a long road and lots of racetracks for Garlitz from 1957 when he ran 170 miles an hour to today when he has gone over 100 miles an hour faster. Garlitz in the near lane. LaHaye in the far lane. A great start. LaHaye and Garlitz side by side in the middle of the course. And LaHaye's engine explodes. Garlitz wins his 30th ever title. 5.50. 268 miles an hour. What a tremendous explosion for Dick LaHaye. The advantage off the starting line by a hundredth of a second went to Garlitz. It was oh so close. You see LaHaye in 
in the far lane. Has about a three-foot lead at that point. But a mid-track, Garland has caught and passed LaHaye, and at the finish, the engine exploded. As we look at another angle, you see the concussive force as that supercharged engine just levels the top of the motor. The parts flying off the front end of Garland's car, but he wins his race. Well, Don, as many years as you've been racing, few days could possibly be more satisfying than today was. The hometown crowd, everything went right, the record, the, the whole deal. Yeah, what did we turn? Not quite enough to back up the record, but believe me, everyone acknowledges you were the first to go 270. Really? It's uh, been quite a day. And I noticed there's uh, some scars on the canopy there. Yeah, it's nice to have that there. A piece of that belt came back with the fiberglass and hit it pretty hard. I have a feeling that's the last time we'll see the belts on the yeah. front end of this car. You can bet on that. <laughs> Dick LaHaye was a tough customer. He exploded a blower there. He might have even been tougher. Yeah. Yeah, he was right there almost all the way. And the theory works. The front end works. Yeah, the, the design is correct. We just got to get the right components up there. How long do you think it'll take before someone imitates it? Well, I imagine a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Don Garlitz, the Gator National Champion for the fourth time. Our congratulations to all the champions at the 17th Annual Gator Nationals. For Steve Evans, I'm Dave McClellan saying so long from Gainesville.